What is up guys? Pretty big news today. It's been a while since uh, I've actually done anything with the motor. Um, I've had it for a little bit and I haven't made a video on it. I've been pretty busy lately with school and all. But today is finally the day I'm going to show you what's going in my 67 uh, 122. And I think you'll be pretty surprised with uh, what I picked up here. It's been in this tarp for a little while. Um, we're going to uncover it here. What I will say is that it's a four cylinder and it has a turbo. Tuck it back in there. Ta da! It's a 2013 Cadillac 2 liter turbo. So it's a Ecotech LTG. Makes 272 horsepower, and this year particularly makes 260 pound feet of torque. Uh, I can make 295 pound feet of torque with just the tune because the later, the later year is made in 295 pound feet. So as I, I think in uh, some of the comments I was saying that I'm not very good with wiring, and that is still true. Uh, I have the, all of this wiring that needs to get done. I'm probably, I'm most likely going to send that out and have that done by someone professionally. That way, just simplifies this whole engine. Uh, it actually has a six-speed automatic transmission attached to it. I don't need that, so I'm going to be selling it for a six-speed manual. And these are actually the same engines that came in the 20, I think 2016 or 17 and up two-liter Camaros. So I mean, they have, they've been, they have a decent amount of parts for them. This Ecotech is completely different from all the other ones. Uh, the transmissions uh, don't bolt up to each other or all that stuff, which kind of sucks, but. I'm getting a six speed anyway, you can get them pretty cheap. And basically, the intake is on the opposite side as an older Ecotech, like um, the LNF out of a Solstice or something. There is one guy that uh, on the smoking tire, he actually did, had a, uh, I don't remember what year it was, but it was a Volvo P1800 with an LNF Ecotech in it. So that's pretty similar to this, same, pretty, pretty close to the dimension. So I know it can fit. Uh, it's a rear sump. I have it in a tire right now, it's pretty hard to see. But it's a rear sump and it should actually fit pretty decent. It's kind of a blocky engine. It's pretty square, but but I think we'll be able to get around that. I won't be able to actually put it in the car until I get the six speed transmission, which I'm not sure how long that's gonna be, hopefully pretty soon, because I wanna start getting more uh, parts accumulated for this car. Most of it's just been repair work. So it's a pretty clean engine. Everything looked pretty good on it. I got it for a really good deal. The guy didn't really, I don't know if he knew what it was. He had a 2013 Cadillac with the 2.5, which is non-turbo, and he bought this engine for it. So he bought the wrong one. He's just trying to sell it, get it out of there. It's getting some condensation on there. It's all aluminum. Uh, really, it's going to end up weighing about as much as the B18 that came out of it. As, as crazy as that sounds, this is just all aluminum. Uh, the B18 with the trans that came out is about 425 pounds or so, and this is going to be probably, uh, I want to say around 450 with the transmission. This is like a three, this is a 300 pound engine, and the six speed transmission is only 112 pounds, so give or take some, some pounds. Um, it's got a little Mitsubishi turbo on here. I don't remember what these might be like 20 G's or something. I don't remember. But that's all in good condition. I have it covered just so I don't get metal shavings and dust from grinding in it. But it does have a Mitsubishi symbol on it. You can see that. It's in there. Right there. I don't know exactly what size it is, but I'm probably going to end up keeping this thing stock for a while. I might get a tune on it once I get all the wiring situated. But that's going to be in a little while. There's a few things I need for it still. I'm going to need the throttle body, um, mass airflow sensor, and a throttle pedal, and that's about it. So this is a direct injection 2 liter. So this is the cam driven fuel pump that uh, pressurizes it to like 2,000 PSI, it's ridiculous. Uh, here's some other, this is fuel line, that kind of stuff. But I think it's going to fit alright. Uh, the problems that that guy with the P1800 had. I can't remember his name now, but 
he had a, those LNFs were kind of mid-sump, so he had to end up cutting quite a bit of the cross member up. This, I don't think I'm going to have that big of a problem. It looks like it lines up. My biggest concern is the alternator here and the water pump on this side. I think the water, the water pump's higher up, so it's not that big of a deal. I don't need this AC compressor, so I'll get rid of that and basically just be left with a bare bones engine here with a ton of wiring still. So it's a drive-by wire system, so I'll be able to put the throttle pedal wherever I want, which is good. I can put it on the ceiling if I wanted to, wherever I want to, um, which helps. I don't have to route a uh, cable or anything, but they're a little bit laggy compared to a cable, but you can fix that with a tune, which is kind of cool with this engine. So all I have to do to get 300 horsepower, 330 pound-feet of torque is, is pay some guy, and he'll send me a tune. Uh, through the mail and I'll just plug it in and he can uh, tune it right then and there and that's about it it's like 400 bucks or something gets me another 30 horsepower and another 50 pound feet of torque in this little four cylinder I think it's gonna make this this whole girl fly and with all the frame strengthening modifications I had to do should be strong very strong I actually just sold the B18 and trans out of it, so I got a decent amount of money for that since it was running and everything. Kind of low compression, but the guy knew that. He was putting it in a an older 6-volt B16 car, and the engine's just ch tired and didn't want to deal with that. I cut this wing off here. I think I don't really want to buy the wing kit because I, I don't think I could integrate it very well. And I know I can do it with, um, I'm going to grab some two inch bar flat stock, kind of run it back here and see if I can brace that all up, which I, I'm pretty sure I can. It should be strong. Still got some of this stuff to tidy up that needs to cut that off and just some little more rust stuff, which kind of sucks. I patched this over here. You can't really see it down here. I patched, I still got to patch that which none of that stuff's real hard. This is probably my hardest thing that I need to do in the near future. Just go buy some steel and see what I can do. The holes, I mean, I can change where the holes are, so I'm pretty sure I can make the fender fit nicely on there. It's not that, that uh, big of a deal. This side, I was thinking of saving some of it, but I don't know about that. It's pretty crusty stuff. The driver's side seems to be a lot more rusty than the passenger side. So that is basically it, guys. I uh, just wanted to show you the motor I had for it and basically what's coming in the future. I know it's not a Volvo engine, not a Swedish motor, but I really I, I think it's going to complement this car really well. I like the body style of these Volvos. That's why I bought it. And I was thinking about a Volvo engine, but it's just there a bit more I have to do to the engine bay and to the engine to make it fit which is kind of surprising, um, the oil pan and all that stuff I have to do. And with this engine, I hopefully won't have to do that. And it should be relatively reliable because it is a American motor. So, yep, that's about it. That's what's coming. That's what's going in here. That's it, final. See you guys in the next one. I still have another surprise for you guys that's going to be coming up. Um, so stay tuned for that. See you guys in the next one.